I was a very proud Emacs user for a long time, but I've been having problems with Emacs that I just wanted to change my text editor. So for me, Emacs has been getting really slow, and all of the Emacs frameworks I try are also slow, and when I want to write my own Emacs configuration, then that's pretty overwhelming. So I went out on the internet to look for some unique text editors that aren't Vim or NeoVim. That's going to be a very important part of this video, so it's going to be very exciting, make sure to watch till the end. And the one that I came across is called Helix. Now Helix is a pretty unique text editor in its own way, because it's more of an integrated development environment than a text editor. Because it ships with LSP and very good features by default. For example, it has like hundreds of themes by default, so that's really nice to see. And it also has language servers, as I said. So basically, you can just install Helix and use it as your IDE without any sort of configuration. And that's not a thing on text editors like Vim or NeoVim. Right now, if I just launch NeoVim, which is usually the most popular text editor, then you actually have to configure NeoVim and install plugins to get stuff like a language server working. With Helix, it just works out of the box. And if I open up my Helix configuration, you can see that there's not much here. Now the configuration is done in the Tomo configuration file format. It's a pretty easy language. And all I did was just change my theme, add some settings for the editor here. Most of this can be found in this very good documentation for Helix. So this I just took straight from the documentation and copied it over. You can also change some stuff like the cursor shape when you're in insert mode. You'll probably want to change that to this bar. You can also add key bindings. So I played with that for a while. You can see that I just added one key binding space S to save my file because by default it's colon W. Now Helix also has Vim key bindings and Vim motions, although it's much inspired by Kakoon. Now Kakoon is a pretty cool text editor as well. Now both Kakoon and Helix have this philosophy where you do a selection before your action. So basically if I move around with my words with the W command, on Vim this would just move around. You would never get the document. But with Helix it's actually going to select this word that I'm gonna move around with. And then once you select something you then do your action. So in Vim you'd press DW to delete a word and on Helix you would press WD to delete a word. So that's pretty unique thing about Kakoon and Helix. Now Kakoon and Helix are also pretty similar but the thing with Helix is obviously the fact that it works out of the box without many configurations needed. And I did not install any plugins for Helix because that's actually not possible as well. Helix does not have a plugin ecosystem. That's not much of a problem because all of the features I want just work out of the box with Helix. Another cool feature that I want to show around with you is the key bindings overlay. So if I press space which is the default modifier for key bindings, you can see that it will bring up this very nice little menu with all of my key bindings. It's similar to which key that you would see use on Vim or Emacs. So if you go ahead and do a space F then it actually has a very nice built-in file picker. Now this is very similar to what you will see with telescope.nvim, which is a plugin for NeoVim that basically gives this nice little file picker for NeoVim. And this is built into Helix. And now Helix is also a very snappy text editor. Unlike many other NeoVim frameworks I've tried, because obviously I can't just use regular NeoVim, I have to try some sort of framework or starter kit. They have all of these useless features that I never asked for and I can do my NeoVim configuration by myself but that's the whole point of Helix to not have a huge configuration file. And Helix is very snappy so if I press GE which is the key binding for going to the end of the file you can see how it does it pretty instantaneously. I've seen with some NeoVim distros like LazyVim where it does an animation and it's really slow stuff like that. I've also found new Vim to be slow as well, pretty surprising. So Helix is a really good text editor for me. Now let's go into the website of Helix and how to install it. Now you can see that it says here that it's a post-modern text editor. So if new Vim was a modern text editor, then this is basically a post-modern one. That's a pretty nice thing here. So let's just go to the documentation and go to the installation. Now of course with every single 
good program that's obviously going to be its own cons and I'm just going to go over all of the problems that I've been having with Helix which is only one problem right now if I open up a file that has colors in it so this is my theme file with colors you can see that it has these hex codes now in Emacs if I install the package called rainbow mode it would actually highlight these colors with the actual color however since Helix doesn't have a plugin ecosystem I wasn't able to add this now Helix has a languages .toml file so if I go ahead and open that up then you can see that in my language .toml I tried to install this uh, plugin well it's kind of a plugin it's really just a language server called ubu underscore colors it's basically this sort of plugin as I said but although it's a language server that allows you to add color highlighting and color language server recommendations stuff like that to helix although i wasn't able to get it working i have no idea why but those are the only problems i'm having with helix you also have nice little git source control stuff so you can see these weird little lines in my helix right here that's basically git source control so if i actually put this config in my dot files repository and you can see that it shows this stuff which is not in my git repository and this stuff is modified so this means that this line is something different on my git repository so i can easily know whether this file is the same on my git repository or not that's a nice thing about helix i've also tried out cocoon and tried to use it for a while but i didn't really like it it does have very similar features to emacs although i find helix to be the best one out there and that's pretty much my review for Helix. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. That's it. I will see you later.